Hello, hello there, and welcome back to War Thunder aboard the TCM HES, which is the 10 star reward for the ongoing Operation Winter in 2021 slash 2022 it is considered to be a light tank at rank 6 battle rating 9.3 and oversimplified it is the tracked version of the m1128 striker um, in certain aspects it's worse in certain aspects it's uh, superior to the striker and that makes it actually interesting so if you have nothing in the us tech tree so far but you grind it like a berserker through the event which is always a lot of grinding then you might look probably at the potential of this being a talisman candidate one thing that i want to point out this is not a premium when you get it it will be stock you have to stock grind it and you do not get extra rp and you do not get extra civil lines and when you put a talisman on it you can only research rank 5 6 and 7 without penalty lower battle ratings get a penalty on it just to be clear because sometimes people seem to not be aware of this now let's talk about the defining feature of this thing and that's the gun the chassis is a bit trolley but it's all about the gun or shall i say the remote controlled gun turret because that is the strength and that makes it similar to the um, striker the difference is that here you have a five second reload for the autoloader and you have eight shells in the ready rack afterwards it takes a long time to reload the ready rack for the autoloader and when you are out of battery then the autoloader is significantly slower those are my observations but when it works holy hell does it work five second autoloader with apf sds is always great um, also you can go hull down and no crew ever is exposed this is great as then you can uh, make the enemy miss a lot of shots and when you are gun breach gets knocked out you just go back a few meters repair it and re-engage the enemy at range here is a really great example of what i'm talking about and this is where also this the hes is better than the striker because you have eight degrees of gun depression and not only five and you're tracked so you're dealing better with slopes let's quickly talk about the mobility you have a 507 horsepower strong engine for a 22.2 ton tank giving it a horsepower to ton ratio of 22.8 that's not bad but i think the tracks are a bit narrow so it feels a bit weird and the driving model feels a bit unfinished the turning very often is really sluggish i think it's the rubber pads that give it this really not so great feeling to it now the thing is that this tank has a laser rangefinder which is great and it also has thermal imaging for the gunner but it is rather low quality as you can see here and uh, yeah this is where the striker is just better and yeah, no idea how that missed you can also scout and you can help your allies repairing quite a lot now let's talk about the ammunition here what are you firing at now i said that you have to kind of stop grind this and that means that you start with the normal uh, cho average heat round with 400 millimeters of penetration 1173 meters per second mass velocity and it is called the m456a2 and yeah heat round if you are accustomed to high tier you know what i'm talking about it does perform really poorly versus era uh, which stops it and it's not a tandem warhead of any sort of this de designation it prematurely detonates on bushes fences trees and any sort of obstacles and the only advantage is that it keeps the penetration even at long distances then you have a uh, funny the choice between the m416 smoke round which it's debatable if it's that useful you also have some smoke grenades two pops and then you also as another tier one upgrade you have the m735 ap fsds which you should get asap now here is one important thing it has 353 millimeters of penetration at zero degrees angles of attack at 60 degrees angles of attack which is more important it has 166 millimeters of penetration it's workable but it just doesn't lol pen like for example the m900 um, and the c76a 
one APFSDS has the same penetration value at zero degrees angles of attack with uh, 353 millimeters, but at 60 degrees angles of attack, we get a massive increase to 204 millimeters. And yet that is not enough to go through the majority of frontal uh, plating of the most of the Russian MBTs. But for weak spot sniping, for knocking out the gun breach, uh, driver's hatch, turret ring, lower glazes, side shots, it just does the job and it also has a muzzle velocity of 1509 meters per second. Additionally, you can get the tier 3 hash round, the M393A2, 127 millimeters of penetration against all angles at any distance and 732 meters per second mass velocity to lop it over ridge lines, etc. So that is basically uh, the TLDR of this tank. Um, one thing about the armor though, um, the upper glacis is heavily angled, but you should not rely on it bouncing actually anything. Um, it's mostly some aluminum alloy, so don't expect it to stop anything. But from the side, it might get a bit trolley because the upper half of the chassis is actually protected by some composite side skirts and they can deal really well versus heat rounds and even the better ones can get absorbed. But then exactly in the middle, there is a gap and the lower glazes uh, or the lower composite screen, they do not really stop anything. So aluminum alloy, it's an inch all around or 25.4 millimeters. And so is also the gun protected. So it can easily get knocked out in theory. However, my experience was a bit different that this tank really a lot of people don't know how to engage it and they just look at you and then just try to figure out what the hell is this so i guess this is the advantage of a content creator getting a vehicle a day or two early and so i had the effect of a uh, surprise so to speak people were just not aware of what they were fighting they were shooting the turret hitting the turret but not hitting the gun breach and so even the strongest APFSDS round etc in the game cannot deal serious damage to this vehicle again because the crew is a bit further away from it um, then let's talk about how you should play this well for a start this is at first a great support vehicle this is nothing really for the front line as artillery oh that was beautiful mm. hitting the tail and he still flies on watch that yeah autistic screeching of actually dead helicopters spamming their rockets in anger and frustration for what feels an eternity oh gaijin <laughs> um anyway so this is a support vehicle it should never really see the front line directly um it can troll the enemy but i don't know how reliable this will be in the future um it is up to you to look for those positions where you can go hull down and sometimes it's really crazy that some of those are in plain sight um, in the middle of nowhere and the relatively um, low silhouette of the tank will help it. So this is what every single British tanker actually dreams of because you actually are useful in hull down and don't underestimate it. So this can annoy enemies quite a lot. The problem is that you don't have a lol pen shell like the M900, like the striker has it. And that is a bit frustrating uh, when you are used to light tanks being actually overpowered. But I'm also kind of glad that armor will not lose uh, its value versus this thing. And uh, yeah, I really tried to hit this helicopter. There we get the critical hit. I tried to lob a hash round actually. And he just doesn't care. And yeah, it doesn't hit. What a shame. So you can see the five second auto loader. It is really also helpful if you stick in the cap. So this helicopter just ate an AP FSDS through the entirety of the helicopter and ate an ATGM. And only now he's going down. I'm just saying. And I have never seen as many helicopters at top tier as I've seen today. And I've died to them as well because 
rocket spam, whatever. So, yeah. There we go. This is also a nice position on White Rock Fortress, a map that I usually despise. But it just fits um, this tank and it fits just how it plays out. And that I really like. Now, in, in such positions, you just can hold off an enemy advance considerably. You're a tiny target and even if they hit you, it's m mostly not a mortal blow. And yeah, you just get up there again to fight another day. Mobility overall is alright. Armor is kind of weak, but sometimes can be trolly. And the firepower lives and dies by the autoloader. If you are too enthusiastic, uh, you can run out of ammunition because of your only 8 rounds in the ready rack, which is sufficient for any sort of uh, early engagement, pumping 2-3 rounds into an enemy, killing it, and then disengaging, reloading 1-2 rounds, re-engaging, etc, etc. And yeah, what I really miss on this tank is actually a 50 cal. It has two machine guns, but both of them are only light machine guns. So this feels a bit like a uh, German tank in that aspect. And that was double tracking. Okay, only one track apparently. And there you can see now the autoloader reloads much slower because it's run out of juice. And I just realized it today. What a good demonstration. You're getting perfect footage here. And again, here is this engagement versus um, a Swedish 40mm Bofors boy. Yeah, and he repeatedly hit me, but he really did not do any sort of critical damage to me. And this is how you can um, derp with enemy people. And yeah, that's it for me today. I hope you enjoyed this quick presentation and this uh, quick first impressions. I really like it, but it's up to you if you really fancy it. As usual, why not give this video a like if it did? For me, it means the world. For you, it's just a click. Subscribe and hit the bell if you want to see more. And as usual, we will see each other on the waves, in the skies and on the battlefields of War Thunder.